Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor tutorials. We do a new one every week and we also do a bonus tutorial every month for our Let's Make Art Matter recipient. This month our Let's Make Art Matter is going to Robert who lives in Mississippi and he just started going to um, a veteran's home for care and is feeling a little bit lonely and so I thought that we could send him a little postcard and um, just show him that we think of him and uh, he's supported and he's loved. So this is what we are going to paint on our postcard, a beautiful lemon. Um, I just wanna remind you guys that this comes free in your subscription box, pre-addressed, pre-stamped. Um, so all you have to do is take the time to paint it and then drop it in the mail. Uh, you do not have to paint what I'm painting. You can paint him whatever you want. Um, so feel free to play around and since he's a veteran maybe if you want to do something a little bit patriotic you are more than welcome to do that um, I'm just going to use the colors that came in our January box um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say before we get started nope I'm hello good. welcome to let's make art I said that oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, we have Michael doing our camera work who's my husband so I kind of like him Hi, everyone um, he'll be telling me where to look and asking questions and all of that fun stuff. Um, you can see here that I have an old palette because I want to show you that watercolors are totally reusable. You don't have to rinse your palette every single time you start a new painting. And so the first thing that we are going to do is sketch out our lemon um, and then we'll start painting it. So this one is kind of reminiscent of our lemons project, which was the very first project in our January subscription box, but it's a little bit more um, realistic. And I think it's kind of fun to show you guys how to do more of an illustrative style and more of a realistic style so you can build up that skills and then you guys can choose which one you prefer to do. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My brain took a little it's morning pause. <laughs> it is first thing in the morning. I'm eating a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> okay, I have mine, which I will eat after I'm done filming eat it on this. on camera, that'd be awesome. Yeah, you get to hear that chewing. Nom, nom. Very nice. Okay, so I just have a pencil. Just remember to draw lightly whenever you are drawing something before watercolor or use a watercolor pencil, and that way those lines will disappear once water touches it. So, Okay, so lemons are round. So I'm going to start with a basic round shape and I'm not going to put it right in the middle. It's going to be slightly off center. So here's my basic lemon shape. And then the lemons also have like a pointy top. And some lemons are really wonky. Like some of them are really squatty and round and some of them are kind of longer and skinnier. So don't stress too much about your lemon shape. All lemons, all lemons are beautiful. All lemons are beautiful. And I'm sure you would find that shape somewhere in nature. I said women's. I know. <laughs> I meant lemon. It's also true. All tr also true. Also true. It's on purpose. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of sketch out my branch that's coming, that it's hanging off of. So here's a little branch. And then if you want to sketch your leaves, you can. It might be helpful for you when you're... Um, kind of doing the composition. You can add more leaves, you can do two lemons. Please feel free to make this yours. This is your painting. You're the artist, so you get to decide all of the things. Okay, so there's my rough sketch. And I'm just going to softly erase some of these lines so they're not super dark while I'm painting. Because once water hits graphite lines, you can't erase them, even if there's no actual color on top of it. Um, you can't erase them, so. Okay, now the colors that I will mostly be using are the lemon yellow, magenta, uh, leaf green, and sea blue. So all of the colors in January except for violet. Sorry, violet. Okay. So, I'm gonna start by hitting my paintbrush in my water, hitting the bristles off the side of the cup, and then I'm gonna pick up some yellow and I'm going to start painting my lemon yellow. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm actually going to avoid this area. So I'm kind of just gonna do a circle around the top middle because this is the glare on my lemon. So whenever something has form, 
like a lemon or anything that's three-dimensional, we have to communicate that it has form through value. And so we wanna make sure that we have a highlight on our lemon and also a shadow. So right now we're kind of putting in our medium value here, which is just gonna be straight yellow. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna start putting in our shadow because what we're trying to communicate is this lemon is round. And whenever you're trying to communicate something that's round, depending on where the light source is, for the most part, you're gonna have a highlight near the front and then on the sides of the lemon, it will shadow to show that it's turning away from the light and then it, therefore it goes around. That's why we do it a darker value. If we don't do a darker value and if we keep it like this, you can even compare that this one seems a little bit more flatter, more two dimensional compared to this one. So that's why value is important. In the lemons tutorial that we released earlier, I talked about how you can adjust the value by either doing the same color or you adjust value by hue. And that means you adjust the value by adding another color in there, which is what I did with this orange. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta to mix with my yellow to make an orange. So I'm just going to kind of pull that to the side, grab some yellow. Here's You're really good at this. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're learning so much already. Uh -huh. You're like I can paint anything now. I understand concepts. It's darker on the edges, turning <laughs> away from the light. Also, the name of your metal band, right? turning away from the light, yeah. absolutely. Sarah's a death metal singer. <laughs> they don't need to know about that part of my life. <laughs> okay, so on the edges here, I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of orange. So after I add the orange, I rinse my brush and using just water, I blend out. Because I want there to be transitions, I don't want it to be like an outlined orange section. So I kind of just blend. Here. And look at that, already form. Do you think, your, that, do you think your recipients watch these tutorials? Do you think like? I don't know. I think some of them do. I know that some of them have. Like the last one we did for the couple that own the hot dog stand, while I was doing the live, they were watching. And it was great because I was asking them questions. That's like, awesome. are you so sick of hot dogs? Right. <laughs> Never. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're not. How could you? And then I'm like, I should have painted you a hot dog, but I didn't know. <laughs> Our four-year-old was a hot dog for Halloween. I told them that story <laughs> during that live. Um, okay, and the other thing I want to point to, because um, I realized I didn't go over this with you guys also, is in your January subscription box, you had a bonus item, which were these Daniel Smith dot cards. Um, and I know that some of you were a little bit confused on how to use them, so I thought I would also use them a little bit in the tutorial. Not much, because everybody got a different dot card. They were separated by artists, so you guys can see local artists, not local, uh, contemporary artists. Maybe local. Maybe local, Maybe I don't know. Um, but I just wanna show you guys that how to use them. So I'm gonna grab some of this coral color here. So this is dried watercolor tube paint, and Daniel Smith is great quality paint. So if I wanna grab some of this and put it in here, I'll just paint with it as if it's like my dried liquid watercolors on my tray. I know these dots seem really small, but watercolor goes a very, very long way. You could absolutely do a painting out of these dot cards. You could probably do multiple paintings out of these dot cards, especially if you do them small. But um, I didn't want to do the whole postcard out of the dot card since you guys all have different colors and that would be frustrating. So, um, so you just grab some color and drop it in. And I'm going to blend out. good news is, is if you mess this step up, you could just have it be an orange, you know? <laughs> that is absolutely true. And if it's too green, it could be a lime. So <laughs> many options. <laughs> the other thing that's sometimes helpful when you're painting a form is to actually follow, have your brush strokes follow the shape of the form itself. So instead of working up and down, you'll notice that I'm actually rounding my brush a little bit 
because if I were, because the, the lemon is curved, it, it's not totally like flat, so I would paint up and down. I'm kind of following the shape of my lemon here. Size brush you got there, two? Oh, this is a round six, great Ooh, question. Six. I'm using a round six to do this part. Um, if you feel more comfortable doing a, using a two, you're welcome to It'd just take you longer because it's a much smaller brush. Here, and then if you want like even a little bit more value, you also can bring in a little bit of green. Do I have green on here? Ooh, that's a good green. This is Cascade Green. Because lemons, depending on where they are in their ripeness, have green tints to them too. Bring some green in there. Maybe along the edge. Okay. Now I still have this big hole in the middle. That's okay, I'm gonna leave that for now. And we're gonna let our lemon dry for just a second. And we're gonna pay attention to the leaves around our lemon. Sorry, I'm doing more yellow. Okay. So uh, let's do our branch. So I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush. And to mix a brown, because brown didn't come in our box, all you have to do is mix complementary colors. So I'm gonna mix some magenta with some green. And if I want it to be a warmer green, I can add some yellow, I mean warmer brown, I can add some yellow or orange. And now I have this gorgeous brown. And I'm just going to do my branch. Are, Michael, you have grown lemons before. Yes, ma'am. Are are they are the branches thicker than this usually? I feel like they are. I mean, to support a lemon that size, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. I like thinner branches, but if you guys want to do a thicker one, that would actually be more accurate. And here's a little where they come off, like so. Now the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that branches, as they go out, they get thinner. So you want to make sure that your base of your branch, like where it connects to the tree, is the thickest part and then it thins out as it goes out towards the, the leaves. For the most part that is true for trees. And I have some flowers coming up on this side, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch back to my six and do my leaves. Now um, I'm gonna do a wet on wet technique to do leaves first. So what that means is doing this big middle leaf here, I'm gonna use just water, just a thin layer of water. I don't want it to pool, so I don't want it to be a thick layer where if I were to like do this, it would drip. That's too much water. So it's more of a thin layer And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna pick up some green and just drop it in there. And it's just gonna move on its own. And if you want an even wash, you can just work your brush back and forth. Even wash means that the value is even, like there's not super, there's not a lot of dark and light going on. Okay, and if you want to throw in some of your Daniel Smith colors, if you like some of the green in here, you can. Um, now somebody asked me if it's okay to mix liquid watercolors with two paints. And um, first of all, I want to say that anything that you want to do is okay because you guys are the artists and a lot of figuring things out is experimenting with things. I combine them, but the one thing that you do want to keep in mind are liquids are not light fast, which means they fade in direct sunlight. And Daniel Smith paints are light fast. So that would be the only thing to think about where if you did a painting of both and hung it in direct sunlight, it's possible that some of your painting will fade. I, I think that's the only thing I can think of that would, that you guys might need to know. But even if you're painting with light fast colors, um, like Daniel Smith's, you still shouldn't put paintings in direct sunlight, originals. 
yeah, it's I never think, a good idea. I think no matter how light fast anything is, fades over time. And it UVs, does. And UV light. It does. Think of your car. That paint's intense, and it still fades. Does it? Yeah, it gets all those white, all the clear coat comes off, and then you look like my truck. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. I guess I don't know about enough about, like, UV UV rays destroy everything. Okay. They so, put those lights in, like the hand sanitizers. They just kill everything. They do. Okay, I'm going to do my other leaves. And right now I'm just doing the underpainting. We'll go back and put in textures on the top. Also, I love being able to drop in blues and yellows when I'm doing leaves just for color variation, just for visual interest. And I have a little guy kind of poking out here. Now, um, if you want to do the wet on wet technique like I showed you here, you can. Or if you just want to go straight with paint on paper, there's nothing wrong with that either. It just depends on the look you're going for. And I'm kind of avoiding my lemon because I want all these leaves to be behind my lemon. You can, of course, do them on top if you want. Okay, and I got one coming out here. So while you're painting, I was reading about a school for blind children. Uh-huh. And they have a course trying to tell blind children what color is like, which is impossible because obviously they've never seen it. But they use analogies to other things. So like for green, I like green and brown the best. I'm going to read you those too. Okay. Green, they have them hold soft leaves and wet grass, tell the children that the green feels like life. Oh. I think that's sweet. And then yeah. brown is the smell of fresh baked bread, a coziness when you're sitting by a warm fire, the feeling of someone telling you how much they love you. Brown feels like melting in the best way. Oh my gosh, I just got goosebumps. Why am I getting teary-eyed over that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I'm like nine months pregnant. <laughs> you're pregnant? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> surprise. I thought that was a cool approach to it because like- That is a cool approach, yeah. You're never gonna be, you're never gonna be able to tell them what the value looks like, but you can have them make associations with it. What the hue looks like, yeah. Sorry, I corrected you. If you have a degree in art, you can <laughs> all you want. Okay, so that's the base of our leaves. Um, we're gonna leave those alone for just now, and we're gonna go do little flowers. Now, lemons have really gorgeous little white blooms. And they smell great. Do they? Oh, yeah. And um, these colors aren't totally accurate. I feel like they they tend to be a little bit more purple, and this is kind of a peachy color. Is that right? You've grown lemons a few times. Um, they they come in different colors. I had white and purple. Did you? Before. Remember my big lemon tree? Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Um, so I kind of adjusted the colors a little bit. You, of course, this is your painting. You can do whatever you want. Um, so and also the most for the most part, the petals are white, but I didn't want to do white flowers i wanted to do pink flowers and because it's my world that i'm creating i can do whatever i want you also have that freedom okay so i'm going to grab a little bit of magenta with a tiny 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 bit of yellow in there and i'm just going to do like a mini flower with five petals so it's just little and then i'm going to rinse my brush and using just water i'm going to paint the rest of the petals And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the center of the flower to be more concentrated and the petals to be a really light value. So you can do that. And if you want to do an extra splash of color right here at the base of the petal, you can. I think it is something I miss dearly about like living in the middle of America is citrus doesn't grow here very well. And yeah. I just remember the smell of the flowers in spring, like in California. Oh, yeah. Citrus flowers are the best. Okay, so there's one. And if you want to do another one, you can. Maybe this one's a little bit more purpley. And I had it kind of going off my postcard up here. But you can do more flowers. You can have more branches going on here. Remember, don't be afraid to try something. The worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to turn out and that one piece of paper it's not going to look as great as you want it to. So don't be afraid to try something. Okay. Now we're going to go back and finish our lemon. So 
I'm gonna move to my six and using just water, I'm gonna move the color that's already there. Like so. And I want the transition to be smooth, so I'm gonna work the edges a little bit more to make it a smooth transition into the glare. Do you find different paints are better and worse at blending? Yes, and actually what also affects that is the paper that you're using. So I have noticed, so we use Canson paper with liquid watercolor. I have noticed that those two together actually work better than a different combination. And there's lots of different types of paper and there's lots of different types of paint. So if you're not getting um, the textures that you want, it's possible that you are just need to change up your materials a little bit. So for me, I feel like I like liquid watercolors because I think they blend so good. Um, are we okay? But you might find something different or you might be looking for a different quality and that's why you prefer two paints with um, Arches paper or something like that. And then what I'm going to do is after I blend it, I still left a little bit of some white marks, just a little. And then I'm just gonna do kind of like, I don't wanna say like polka dots, but kind of like dot it a little bit because lemons have that um, texture on them where it's not perfectly smooth. It has like indents, tiny little indents. They're is there oil pockets. Oil pockets, is that what they are? Yeah, you squeeze a lemon peel or something and it squirts you in the face. Yeah, so I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm not gonna do a lot of that, but just a hint to give the idea of the, f the actual texture on this lemon. Look at that lemon, that's a pretty darn good lemon. Okay, now we're gonna finish our leaves. So um, leaves have veins in them, and usually veins, um, some people can do, you can do veins this way, where you just get a darker value, and I'll do both. So, and you guys can choose which one you wanna do. Um, you can just do it in a darker value where you kinda of do the main vein and then kinda of have the, the branches of the other veins going off the main one, like so. If you want it to be a little bit more accurate though, for, um, I think for lemons, their veins are actually a lighter value than the leaf. So it would actually be opposite. So we did this one using a darker value. If you wanna do, do the opposite, then you're basically gonna do the opposite of what we just did. So I'm gonna paint around. So you can even look at this as a reference and be like, okay, there's a chunk here. So I'm painting around the veins on my leaf. Does that make sense? Can you yes. picture what I'm trying to do? Yes. It's, it's kind of difficult to do this because um, you're kind of like thinking opposite. So if you're not quite there yet and you're struggling with this, don't stress. You can not do it. You can do the darker ones first or you can just let your leaves be smooth. It's totally up to you. So you know all those things you hear about like singing to your plants and playing music for your plants? Yeah. So in college we talked about them and I mean, probably gonna get some comments about this, but it turns out they have no scientific basis. But really, what uh, my botany teacher said you could do for a plant that you really like is go by, he called it kissing the plant, you go by and you blow up under the leaves. Because plants Aww. breathe CO2, and so you just like give them a little kiss of air. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. There really is no basis around the talking to your plant nicely thing? No, they have no, they have no vibration sensors. There's no, there's no way for them to know. Huh. Also, uh, foliar feeding, like spraying nutrients on your leaves, negligible effect. They don't have any receptors for nutrients in the leaves. Oh, okay. So if you wanted to give them a little extra something, you have to do it in the soil. Yeah. Roots are built for uptaking nutrients. Leaves are built for photosynthesis. Okay. Botany is a fun thing. Everyone should do it. That is a fun thing. And one day I will have a plant that I keep alive. And kiss your plants and just blow kisses at your plants. <laughs> Eric Wada, if you're watching this, you're an awesome teacher. Aw. Okay. So there's my veiny leaf. If you want to do it on this one, you can. If you want to do it just the dark, you can. 
Just whatever feels good to you. You guys are the artists and you get to choose. And you can do a mix. There's no rule saying that you have to like stick to one all the way through. I like to do a mix. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is like on this one, because it's behind the lemon, I need to separate these spatially. So right now, this is looking like right next to the lemon and I wanna push that leaf farther away. So to do that, I'm gonna actually do a darker value where it's coming out behind the lemon because the lemon would cast a shadow on that leaf. And that's how we separate things. That's how we separate space in a painting is with darker values. I love how those leaves with the white veins turned out. Yeah, isn't those that look nice? really good, yeah. I mean, I don't want to make the other leaf feel bad. But <laughs> I have a clear favorite. I'm just adjusting the shape of my leaf a little bit because I'm realizing it was getting a little wonky. But of course, there's so many different kinds of leaves that have different shapes and perspectives. So if your leaf is coming a little wonky, there is a leaf somewhere that looks like that. So don't stress. And to separate it a little bit more, I put in a little bit of brown in there, in my green. So already, that leaf to me is feeling farther away. And I'm just gonna re-clean up this edge on my lemon. You know what lemons remind me of? What? Like uh, long grain rice, like chicken kebabs and yogurt sauce. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we make that Greek chicken oh, yeah. with the lemons. Food is so good. Food is so good. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that meal with the tzatziki and the... Yep. Okay. And you can fiddle with this more if you want. I've been in a fiddling mood lately, I've noticed. Okay, we're done. If you want to do little yellow centers on your flowers, you can. I just realized I didn't do that. Just a little doot, doot. Okay, and that's our lemon. That's it. If you want to, you can do like, maybe you want to do like a light blue. What color is this? Oh, look Cerulean. at that. Cobalt teal blue. Look how pretty that color wow. is. If you want to do like a light background, you can. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. Is I, Cerulean blue? Am I making that up? Yeah, there's a cerulean blue. I, okay. I think. Now I you got me all. Blue. Sometimes I feel like I just have the wrong name for things. <laughs> I do that all the time. Fuchsia? Is that pink? Yeah, fuchsia yes. is like a pink purple, but more pink than purple. I'm learning. You are. You can learn. I love that blue wash. That's so good. And typically blue and yellows and oranges like go good together because they're complementary colors. Mm -hmm. um, so they make the other colors stand out. They pop against each other. You're my complementary color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that good or bad? We mix to brown. We mix. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting into dangerous territory here. <laughs> So it's just a little soft blue wash. So play with the colors that you have on your, your dot card. And I just thought this would be a fun bonus for you guys because then you can try, um, I mean, Daniel Smith are, they're high quality paints, they're a little bit expensive, but that way you guys can try it, get a feel for it, maybe test out some colors before you commit to a whole tube. So I hope that you kind of enjoyed that little bonus surprise in there. Watching you do this whole art process for years, yeah, I've decided that there is no best brand of anything. It's just kind of what you like, you know? Yeah, that's why um, I, I, I like to look at art supplies as dog breeds, where mm. it's just like, you can't sit there and say that there is one dog breed that's superior to the other. Obviously they have... Corgi. <laughs> okay, yeah, cor Corgis are wiener dogs, because those are just the yeah. best. <laughs> But it just depends on what qualities you're looking for. So all paint, brands, papers, art supplies have different qualities and we have personal preferences and you just find the supplies that fit the qualities that you're looking for. And um, one thing that I'm very 
um, adamant against is not judging others based on the art supplies that they use because it's like who cares like they can use um, Canton is not a very expensive watercolor paper but it is one that I prefer and that's okay and maybe if you like um, an, a more expensive one, that's great too. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I bought Sarah a very nice, very expensive <laughs> roll of Arches watercolor paper and I, it might have rotted away now. It, it probably did. <laughs> and I was like, I was mad for a while and then I thought just like, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. She likes the other one. <laughs> Listen, I like my $6 pad of Canson. I'm just someone who gets into something and likes like the best of that thing and like there's no end goal in art supplies for me because it's just like, well, I don't know. Yeah, and there's so many different ones to try. Yeah. Expensive does not equal great, you know. Not sometimes. always. Well, and it just, again, it's just what qualities are you looking for? Because even though sometimes Arches paper is really nice, for me, I get intimidated when I have a very expensive sheet and paper in front of me because then I'm like, well, what if this painting doesn't turn out? Then I just wasted $8 or something like that where, like, um, I don't feel as bad with with one, so I'm not like scared. Okay, so that is our lemon tutorial. I hope you guys take the time to paint this for somebody else. Um, if you're not entirely sure what Let's Make Art Matter is all about, we do have a blog about it. And if you want to nominate someone, you can just go to our homepage at letsmakeart.com. Scroll down at the very bottom, there's a button that says nominate. Let's Make Art Matter, you just click on that, you can nominate someone. Um, I know that sometimes, especially with who we choose, it's hard and it's sad and these stories are heavy. Um, but I think our goal in trying to do this was just to show that like, we all share this human experience. Um, we all experience pain and suffering and heartbreak. We also all experience joy. And um, if we can just take the time to recognize that everybody experiences those things, then I think that we can connect on a deeper level and recognize that we're actually not so different from everybody else. Um, Cause I think, it, I think it's dangerous to think that way. Um, and also you might think that, you know, it's just a postcard, how can this really help someone? Which is, which is a valid point. These are really hard things that people go through, but I don't think it's about a postcard, I think it's about knowing that someone is thinking about you and willing to take the time to write you a note and paint you a picture. And that's really what we're trying to communicate is that you're not alone in this, you have a community behind you, we can be that community for you. So take the time to do this for someone else, grab a friend, grab your kids, grab someone else and say, for this moment, we're gonna think about this person and I'm gonna do something nice for them and hopefully it just makes their day better, which is what we're trying to do. Um, also, I would like to say that you guys are free to nominate whoever you want. It doesn't have to be someone who is maybe going through a hard time. Maybe it's your parents' 50th anniversary. Maybe it's your neighbor's birthday. Maybe it, you know what I mean? Like, we can celebrate the fun things too. Quinceañera. Quinceañeras, yes. <laughs> so, um, maybe a new baby coming along. Is that me asking for uh. postcards? <laughs> I didn't mean that to sound that way. <laughs> like, semi chocolate. <laughs> I like chocolate dove. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so anyways, thank you for doing this. Thank you for painting with me. I hope you learned something and um, just kind of take the time to make something for someone else. If you do not have a subscription, you can absolutely still participate in this. Email us at hello at letsmakeart.com and we will send you the address of whoever our recipient is so you guys can still do this activity even if you're not a subscriber. And that's all I got to say. Bye. Bye.